Here we are, a Caesar cipher remixed. How can we make a Caesar cipher in Python? So your Caesar cipher works by turning and shifting letters. So let's have a look at it step by step. Here we have resilience, something that we think is really important for people to do coding and a very important skill for our students to have. So in this case, we're gonna have a shift of three. Let's see what that does to the letters. Ta-da. Now, if you're not sure, feel free to pause the video and check the uh, spin against the table and check if you understand how that shift works. Happy? Excellent. So how do you crack a Caesar cipher? Well, if you have the key, it's easy, and we know it's three. But if you don't, you're gonna to have to go through all 26 options. Now, I selected three to make it easy for you, but you can see how cracking a Caesar cipher works. Right, so that's how a Caesar cipher works. And if you think you are a coding ace, you can just code it right away. Go right ahead, pause the video. Come back if you get stuck. Okay then, obviously a little bit stuck. Let me give you a few hints, mild spoilers at this point. So the first thing is, if you're new to Python, notice how loops can work that you can actually go inside a variable. Notice how we use for i in my variable. Lovely, and immediately shows you how you can go through the individual letters. Good little hint, is it enough to get you started? We'll see. Okay, if you're struggling to just get the idea behind the overall context of this, the way we have the order here is that it starts by converting the text to lowercase. This is to make sure there's no errors. Also, uppercase figures actually really make a big difference uh, to making it easier to crack. So, is the character a space? If it is, then it adds a space to the variable. If it's not, it goes round the list until it finds it. Now here are a few of the very key commands that might help you with that. So text equals plain dot text dot lower. That's a lovely function built into Python. Cipher plus equals. That means it's adding it onto the variable. In this case, it's just adding a space onto the variable. Okay, one more thing. Watch this very short video. It's all going around lovely, working really well, going around to finding it. And uh, we can see it's zebra. And what's special about a Z? Even though we've got a three, do you notice it's number 28? And we only have 26 letters in the alphabet. How will you make that work in your list? Should warn you, I have changed the code slightly from the actual algorithm. So that may not be as helpful as you think. Is that enough hints? Do you think you can try and code it by yourself now? I'm really hoping you can. Okay, but if you can't, here are the real spoilers. So, these are the variables and lists I used. So I used cipher, and that started off blank and got bigger and bigger as we encoded it. Then we had letter, which was a list. You don't have to do it with a list. You could actually get away with a variable, a dictionary, or even convert it from ASCII. Any of those methods would work, but I've done a list because I think it's the most accessible. Plain text is the plain text to be encoded. And finally, key is the key to shift by. Last chance, I'm giving the whole thing away now. The whole plan of how to do this. Do you really need me to take it step by step? Okay then, if you've really got stuck and it's causing a lot of frustration, here is the final way through. So, how did I deal with it? There are some clever mathematical ways to do it. Um, make sure it always goes by 26, use the um, modular functions, those kind of things. However, I just put two copies of the alphabet in so that any overspill was dealt with. Then, after that, I... Um, quite easily had my function and I took in two variables, plain text and I took in key. 
depending how you want to encode it, it'd be perfectly fine to input those things in within the function or even make it without a function if you're really stuck, okay? But with a function, it means you can use it in lots of programs. The first loop goes through the letters in the plain text and then we check for spaces and then we go and add the space. Second loop goes round the list using its length. This adds the letter location plus the key. Notice how I've tried to keep everything in numbers so it literally goes to the position plus three or plus four or plus five etc. And that is how we encode a Caesar cipher. I told you how to encode it can you think of how to decode it and how to crack it, even if you don't have a key? That would be awesome.